This conference will now be recorded. Very good. President Williams, I think you're on mute. Okay, thank you. Are we, um, who are we waiting for now? I we are ready we have enough to have both members of the committee. And Director Gray, is she about? Director Gray is not here, uh, but we do expect her this afternoon, but I don't think she'll be participating in this meeting. Okay, then, well, let's go ahead and uh, let me, uh, We'll thank everybody who's here for our meeting, for our public information education committee meeting, the special board meeting. Um, it is now um, 11.08, and um, I'll call this meeting to order and, and ask for roll call, please. Glad to do that, President Williams. Director Houston? Here. President Williams? Here. We do have both members of the committee here today, uh, but I believe we also have Director Don Deere. On the phone so far. Director Gray, I believe will be absent today. And Director Alvarez. He said he wouldn't make it. So we do have a quorum. We do have both members of the committee. Okay, then let's, let's go on to um, public comment. President Williams, we have not received any public comments or requests for public comments online or through our Acela system. Uh, I do think that there are at least one member of the public here today, uh, virtually, mm -hmm. that would like to make a public comment. Uh, please let us know. Okay, then let's move on to item number four with the presentation. President Williams, we do not have any presentations for you today. Okay, and that takes us to uh, item number five, which is the action calendar, Mr. General Manager. Yes, President Williams. Uh, item 5A is an action item related to our Malibu Smart and Topanga Smart uh, Program extensions. As you recall, this program is funded through a grant uh, through the Integrated Regional Water Management Program. Our very own uh, Gus Meza, Senior Water Policy and Resource Analyst, has been managing and overseeing this program and he has this item presentation for you today. Thank you, EJ. Uh, good morning, Chairman Williams, committee and board members. Uh, morning. This morning, I will be uh, presenting on our Malibu Smart and Topanga Smart program. Um, the board memo starts on pe uh, packet page three, and I'll be covering the attached PowerPoint presentation uh, that's included in your packet, and that starts on packet page seven. As uh, many of you know, uh, we have endured uh, quite a few challenges uh, with this program in, in that area, uh, but we, our partners and our consultant have adjusted along the way and produced water savings in the Malibu and Topanga areas. Uh, next slide, please. I am now on packet page eight. Uh, staff is seeking approval uh, to utilize the remaining project funds to extend the Malibu Smart and Topanga Smart project to June 30th, 2022, and to increase our consultant's contract in order to meet the grant goals. Our consultant is RW Jones Agency, and they are currently assisting with administration, managing the landscape contractors, reporting, and marketing. Uh, the recommendation for this item, which I will also read at the end of this presentation, uh, will be to authorize our interim general manager to amend our agreement with RW Jones Agency to add $40,000 to their current contract, uh, which shall be reimbursed by the grant, and to extend the agreement end date to June 30th, 2022. Next slide. I'm on packet page nine. In 2015, West Base had formed a partnership with the City of Malibu and our water retailer, LA County Waterworks District 29, to develop and implement a water efficiency program in the Malibu and Topanga area. We applied to DWR and were successful in receiving a $1 million grant to provide increased incentives and install water efficient devices in Malibu and Topanga. 
The city of Malibu is the project proponent on this grant. They submit the quarterly project reports to the county and request reimbursements on behalf of West Basin and the partners. Um, our role was to work with our partners in developing and implementing this program. And we also hired RW Joe's agency in 2017 uh, through a competitive bid process to work with West Basin and our partners to administer and market the program. On this slide, uh, we show the results from 2017 through the present. Um, I'll highlight a few of the successes. As you can see here, we provided 152 rain barrels. Uh, residents removed uh, more than one acre of grass. Uh, we had very good success with installing 68 smart sprinkler timers and LA County installed over 2,400 smart meters, smart water meters that are out in front of the, the residents' homes out in the street. Uh, these are advanced meters uh, that can detect leaks in, in real time. So overall, the program has saved uh, over 27 million gallons of water. Uh, we are about uh, 1 million gallons shy of reaching the project goal. Uh, I do want to mention that this, that this part of our service area is the highest water using area. Um, back in 2015, we were using an estimated 260 residential GPCD per gallons per capita per day. Uh, today, they are closer to 210 GPCD. Uh, that's a 20% drop, uh, but they are currently on a gradual uh, up, upward trend. Uh, so to put this, put this in perspective, our average GPCD in West Basin is 134 our GPCD. Next slide, please. As we all know, the project was impacted by the Woolsey fire in 2018 which set the project back six to eight months. Um, at that time, we did adjust and developed our first uh, firescaping class um, that was funded by uh, Metropolitan Water District. Uh, the classes taught residents about the nexus between firescaping and developing a water efficient landscape. Uh, then due to COVID-19, we had to suspend uh, many of our outreach efforts for our Malibu Smart to Pinker Smart program uh, such as in-home meetings with, res with residents. And uh, due to COVID, uh, we converted the in-person firescaping classes uh, to virtual webinars, and we continued promoting the program rebates. Uh, next slide, please. I am on packet page 11. So over the last few years, we have learned a few lessons. Uh, from this project. Uh, we know that many residents in Malibu and Topanga invest a lot of money in their landscapes and they, they want to keep them, uh, but they are open to having us install smart outdoor water efficient devices, uh, such as the um, smart sprinkler controllers uh, that I indicated earlier, uh, that we have solved 68 of them. Uh, several landscape contractors are enrolled in this program and they can quickly install devices. Uh, for us. We also learned that email is by far the best, most effective outreach method, uh, followed by social media efforts. Uh, we have we've had good participation, as you know, in our firescaping workshops and uh, in the past with uh, home uh, assessments, outdoor assessments. Um, we have tried using different messaging. Uh, most recently, uh, during the summer, uh, we developed a video, uh, Summer is Here video, uh, which showed um, kind of our target, uh, it showed like a, like a rain barrel, uh, and it showed our target and where we were with the different devices and asking the public to participate and, uh, and install devices and help us get to that 1 million gallons uh, goal. So that was uh, successful. Uh, re residents also love ca uh, case studies. Um, they like to see what others are doing. Uh, it gives them a sense of comfort to see that their neighbors are also participating in conserving water. Uh, they are more likely to participate themselves if they know that their neighbors, of course, you know, are also participating. Uh, next slide. I am on packet page 12. So if approved by our committee and board this month, 
our consultant, R.W. Jones Agency, will continue assisting with the program through June 30th of next year. They will continue with administration, marketing, qualifying and scheduling residents uh, for the free controller um, and uh, sprinkler nozzle installations. Uh, we recently sent out an email promoting the free smart timers and installations, and our RW Jones received a response back from 76 interested residents, um, which is great news. That's, that's a lot of participation. Um, they will also continue to track, monitor, and report on the program and also continue to assemble the grant uh, quarterly reports. Uh, next slide, please. I'm on packet page 13. Um, as part of this program update, we also wanted to show you the past amendments to the RW Jones Agency Agreement. As you can see here, uh, three of the four amendments was to extend the program due to the fire and the pandemic. And amendment two was to add $68,800 to incorporate the firescaping classes into the program, which our board approved um, uh, a year ago, um, or maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, and that was fully funded by MWD. So the current agreement with RW Jones expires this December, um, uh, but we are seeking to extend it uh, uh, to June 30th of next year. Next slide, please. We're on packet page 14. Um, there is currently uh, 234,631 remaining on the grant budget. We have worked with our partners to develop a strategy that will get us to the water saving goal. Um, as mentioned, we have seen customer acceptance and water savings with, with installation of sprinkler timers and sprinkler nozzles. So we are targeting those devices. Uh, the time extension and funding increase of $40,000 will allow RW Jones to continue marketing the program, managing the landscape contractors, providing customer support, and assembling the quarterly and final report. They will continue working with West Basin and the partners to develop effective uh, marketing messages. Uh, we allocated $20,000 for grass replacement. Um, we will continue, of course, promoting the $5 uh, uh, grass replacement incentive. We've had a few residents apply, uh, but not many, but we'll continue to promote that. So we have some funding there and West Mason will actually be reimbursed by the grant for that funding. And we have allocated $174,631 for the installation of the smart sprinkler controllers and sprinkler nozzles. All these costs are 100% reimbursable to West Basin through the grant. Uh, next slide, please. So the recommendation is, um, is that the board authorizes the general manager to amend agreement number W2730 with RW Joe's agency and add $40,000 to the current contract amount of $643,450 for a new total not to exceed amount of $683,450, which shall be reimbursed, and to extend the agreement end date to June 30th, 2022. At this time, I can um, receive any uh, comments or questions uh, that you may have. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Gus. Uh, Director Houston. Sure, uh, thank you. Mr. Chair, and thank you, Gus. Um, just a couple things. I think number one, this program on its own has been very resilient, quite frankly, in the midst of everything that uh, you guys have experienced along the way. And so um, I'm really happy that all the partners continue to work on it and have been creative um, in its administration. And everyone has also been uh, cooperative as we've had to readjust it along the way. So I wanna say thank you and commend everybody. Uh, that chart that you had on page three of the slide deck is is pretty impressive when it comes to the volume of water that we're saving, uh, especially with grass replacement, over 56,000 square feet just in this area since uh, 2017. Um, I think that is, you know, that's just unbelievable. I think it wasn't our whole service area uh, with our other program 
around that amount last fiscal year, I think, or something. So either way, this is a lot of savings and people taking out grass. And then of course the other two, the smart sprinklers and the efficient, um, excuse me, yeah, the smart sprinkler controllers and the uh, the nozzles, those seem to also save a significant amount of water. So um, very, very impressive. Um, I think that uh, number one, I support this moving forward to the board. Um, we can push this another, what, six months and let's, you know, get this accomplished. And then as it closes out, I think that we should think about, um, you mentioned those case studies that people seem to like the case studies or examples. And so maybe that's something that the team can look at both as you get into the new calendar year, because we're in the midst of this very difficult drought. I think it'll be more timely than ever. Um, but look at those case studies and maybe um, over the course of the winter months, Gus, and or yes, when the program closes out, looking at uh, what we did in the past potential. Remember how we showcased some different, you know, homes or residents up in the Malibu area that had, had utilized these types of programs. Um, and especially, I would encourage the team to look at that as part of your public relations outreach too. You know, if, if people are willing to get some photos taken and they can really push it in the city of Malibu and, and so on and so forth again, because um, these are really great stories. And so anyways, with all that, I'm really pleased that we're gonna try and meet our goal, surpass our goal. Uh, I fully support this. I'm glad also that, you know, financially it, it's covered. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I, I move this forward with a yes for approval to the board. Uh, thank you. Any other uh, comments or questions from board members? Hearing none, I concur that this should go on to the to the board with the recommendation to approve. Thank you. Next item. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, President Williams. Uh, the next item that we have on our action calendar is item 5B, which is our rain barrel home delivery and distribution event. And again, uh, we have Gus Mesa, our Senior Water Policy and Resources Analyst here uh, for this presentation. Thank you, EJ, and good morning again, directors. I am on page 16 of your board packet under the summary section. This item is to recommend two vendors for our rain barrel program. Uh, one vendor will provide the rain barrels and parts, and the other will deliver the rain barrels to our residents. Um, on September 2nd, uh, staff issued an informal request for proposals to five companies to hire a delivery company. And on September 21st, staff received one proposal from a company called Weber's Water Conservation. We did reach out to several companies. Uh, the local uh, delivery company that we used last year uh, did not bid. Uh, we did have some challenges with them. And another is in the midst of moving, so um, they did not have resources. Uh, but we did receive uh, one bid uh, to deliver the rain barrels. And then on September 3rd, staff issued an invitation for quote to 49 companies to purchase the rain barrels using, utilizing our bidding system. And on September 21st, staff received one bid from Green Lane Environment and Recycling Services. And um, they, uh, they bid last year and uh, they were the successful uh, bidder. Um, and they provide the best price uh, for repurposed rain barrels. Uh, in the past, uh, we reached out to a few companies. This is a very niche field uh, of people who provide repurposed uh, rain barrels. And um, I believe that they're familiar with the pricing, and which benefits West Basin that we are getting uh, such a good price from uh, Green Greenlee. Uh, a little bit on the background, um, since 2015, West Basin has provided over 14,000 free rain barrels to the residents in our communities. West Basin has a long-term funding agreement with the Metropolitan Water District, whereby we, we receive $55 per rain barrel, which is reimbursed um, after they are distributed. For this fiscal year, staff will be implementing a hybrid program that provides residents with the option of either receiving rain barrels through a home delivery program or by attending one of two in-person events. Um, at the top of page 17 of your packet, uh, we list the home delivery program timeframe, 
and the two events. So if we can um, scroll to the next page, I will uh, continue on. Um, we also, um, oh, there it is, thank you. As you can see at the top of the, uh, the page here, we provide the, the timing for the uh, home delivery program. And then we also provide, uh, provide the dates um, that we check with, uh, with board services and the South Bay Center and, and with staff. Um, uh, Green Lane Environmental is a company located in Ontario, Canada and provides repurposed uh, rain barrels throughout the United States. And as I mentioned, um, we uh, worked with them uh, last year. They have a very good product, great price, and they provide a very good customer service. And uh, they provided a bid of 75,320, as you can see towards the middle of the board memo there, uh, $75,320, which is within our budget uh, to provide 1,500 rain barrels, parts and shipping. Um, this equates to $48.88 per rain barrel parts and shipping. Um, a company by the name of Weber's Water Conservation provided a successful bid of $28,250, which is under our budget uh, to deliver 700 rain barrels. Uh, we estimate uh, the estimated cost is $56.50 per delivery, and we're estimating about 500 deliveries. Uh, as you know, some people will get two rain barrels so to provide 700 rain barrels, we estimate uh, about 500 deliveries. Um, Weber's Water Conservation, this is a new uh, woman-owned small business out of Encinitas, California. Uh, staff has experience working with the owners of this company in a different company. Um, they're very professional and they provide great customer service. Uh, for these reasons, staff is recommending to award a purchase order to Green Lane for the purchase of the rain barrels and awarding an agreement to Weber's Water Conservation for the delivery of the rain barrels. Um, at the top of page 18, we provide a little bit uh, more detail about the program budget. Uh, the total cost of the program, including marketing, is 116500 of this amount, West Basin will be reimbursed $52,500 from MWD, and the, reigning, the remaining amount of $64,000 will be funded by West Basin. Uh, this equates to a total cost of $42.66 per rain barrel. Uh, that includes all associated program costs. I'm on page 18. Um, the recommendation um, is that the board uh, authorizes the interim general manager to enter into an agreement with Green Lane Environmental and Recycling Services Incorporated for the purchase of 1,500 rain barrels, accessories, and shipping for an amount not to exceed $75,320, and to enter into an agreement with Weber's Water Conservation Incorporated for the delivery of up to 700 rain barrels in an amount not to exceed $28,250. Um, at this time, I can take any uh, comments or questions. Uh, very good. Thank you, uh, Jess. To the uh, directors, um, to Scott Houston first, uh, questions? Um, no question, just a comment. Uh, I see that, you know, as you said, Gus, that only one company wanted to really bid on this, I guess, but for what it's worth, I see that this Green Lane organization, they supply New York City's Department of Environmental Protection with rain barrels as well, Chicago's Metropolitan Water Recreation District. So obviously we're in good company utilizing them. And you guys, uh, you said you worked with them, I think last year, right? Is that what you said? Yes, that's correct. Right, so um, I'm fully supportive of uh, moving both of these forward with a recommendation of yes from the board. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, well, I, I concur with uh, Director uh, Houston. And then I have a question, uh, uh, Gus, uh, concerning uh, spare parts or, um, you know, for, for example, the uh, filter basket. 
uh, where can uh, the uh, local citizens get uh, a replacement um, baskets? They can, um, we have some here, Director Williams. Uh, they can contact me here at the office. Uh, we have some filter baskets and some other parts uh, from the last uh, program. And so I can, uh, I can uh, coordinate uh, with board, you know, with board services um, to provide residents uh, with, with spare parts. Okay, at, at a cost, or are they? Uh, uh, those, if, if they if they participated, um, uh, I would assume they participated last year, and maybe they're missing a part. Um, those would be free. Okay, very good. Well, staff, uh, you did get the. Uh, the recommendation from the, this uh, committee to move forward to the board. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next item. Yes, President Williams, thank you very much. Uh, the next item we have is actually now under our information calendar, which is item six on our uh, agenda. And the first item is 6A, our Water Harvest 2021 event planning update. And for this, we have Melissa Buendia, our Public Information Specialist. Great, thank you, EJ, and good morning, committee chair and members of the committee and board. As mentioned, I will be providing an event planning update for the Water Harvest event this year. And just like that, we are officially one and a half weeks out from our online event that will be taking place on Saturday, October 23rd. And there are a number of items I'd like to highlight for the committee and board today. Um, staff is grateful and fortunate to be partnering with local, regional, and statewide agencies for Water Harvest STEAM Adventure this year to contribute to teaching the importance of our water resources, especially during the ongoing drought in the state of California. So I'll just quickly run through how our two-hour live event is going to play out. And just for reference, I am on packet page 37. So one hour before our live, uh, live sessions begin, we will actually open our virtual doors at 9 a.m. Um, for folks to get settled in, logged on, and start exploring our virtual event page. Um, so that'll be a great opportunity for um, folks to get started on some of the uh, games and activities that we have planned, gather some of the supplies that they'll need to follow along from home, all of those things. And then at 10 a.m. sharp, we will begin with our live sessions with an official West Basin welcome video that features all five of our board members as well as our interim general manager. So thank you for working with staff to schedule some time out of your schedules to film with myself, Daryl, and Janelle over the past couple of weeks. We definitely appreciate it and we're excited for you to see the final video on the event day. So after that, at 10.15, we will be joined by California Department of Water Resources, who will be providing a live technology demonstration, sharing the importance of measuring snowpack in this year in Nevada. They will then pass it along to Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, who will be conducting a live experiment and um, reporting live from the Diamond Valley Lake Education Center. So that's exciting. And then we are happy to have LA County Sanitation District, who will be sharing with us the wastewater treatment side of the urban water cycle and doing a live demonstration of some of the items that are flushable or not. Um, and then uh, at 11.15, um, West Basin will actually, um, or at 11, I should say, uh, West Basin will be providing a live tour um, hosted by our very own Daryl and Janelle of our water recycling facility in El Segundo and showing how we offset treated wastewater for mentoring the oceans and conserving drinking water. Um, sources through our recycled water process. Um, after that, one of our um, longtime partners with the Roundhouse Aquarium will be taking us on a tour of their tide pool touch tank, sharing with us the local ocean creatures that are protected through West Basin's recycled water program. And then last on our live um, segments with our partners, we will be uh, handing it off to Water Replenishment District, who will be doing a technology demonstration and sharing the amazing tools that hydrogeologists use every day to maintain our groundwater sources. And just before the event ends at noon, we will close with some closing statements as well as our very um, famous opportunity drawing of some amazing prizes that 
attendees will have a chance to win. So it is a very busy two hours full of educational activities and technology demonstrations. So we're definitely excited for our attendees to witness those things. Um, other things to highlight here, um, just in terms of how our registration is doing, we currently have about 350 plus folks registered already for this event. And that number does not include those who registered for multiple people under one registration. So we're looking great on our registrations for our event so far. And that is a result of our event pr promotion strategy that has been rolling out over the past month and a half. Um, so we've distributed 25,000 plus flyers to the community. A, a lot of our schools actually opted for digital distribution. So that's great. Um, and we also have um, the director should have received a folder of printed water harvest flyers um, that they can use to share with the community in the coming week. Another, another item we have here is um, the director should have also been either notified or already provided with their allotted five STEAM adventure um, event kits. And yes, EJ's modeling it for us right now. Um, so these special kits were actually an incentive for the first 200 registrants of our event and includes a number of items that can be used before, during, and after event day. So we are really excited that we have, um, we blasted through our first 200 registrants and we have folks that are going to um, benefit from this incentive. So it includes a number of items like gardening supplies and West Basin branded goodies, um, like our reusable straw set, hand sanitizer, and of course our kid-friendly items, our colored pencils and, and water drop pencils. Um, so I just wanted to bring those uh, to the board and committee's attention today. Wanted to highlight those um, items. Things are moving along great. Um, and with that, that concludes my report and I'm happy to take any, any questions that you may have. Thank you. No, thank you for that very uh, thorough report. And President Williams, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'd like to just add a few things. Uh, first of all, I want to really give a lot of credit to our public information education team. I know that all of the directors had the opportunity to go get uh, their their videotape done in terms of this, and it was very uh, exciting to to arrive down there at the ECL and actually see that this is completely run by our staff. Uh, Melissa and Janelle and Daryl were down there uh, operating this along with Amy. Uh, so to do this in-house is really impressive. Also, we had our finance team working on uh, all of the invoices and processing everything to, to get everything done in a timely manner. So I want to say thank you to the finance department. And then also our admin team led by uh, Julie uh, coordinating not just the directors getting there and uh, the videotaping of all of these different things, but also working on our partnerships and sponsorships uh, to get those as part of this event to lower our costs on the event. So uh, it's been a complete team effort and I really want to say thank you to everybody. All right, very good. Then that uh, takes us to the next item. I yes. think uh, my question, wait, wait a minute before we go. Any questions on this uh, item from um, the board? Seeing none, let's move on. Go to item number uh, 6B. Yes, President Williams, uh, item 6B under our information calendar is our Water Education Center exhibit report. And for this report, we have Daryl Ramos Young, specialist three. Thank you, EJ, and good morning, Chairman Williams and members of the board and committee. I'm providing this update about the completion of the exhibits at the Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility as staff prepares to transition to hosting in-person education and public outreach programs at the facility starting in 2022. The Edward C. Little Water Recycling Facility renovation began in 2015 and based on the West Basin Board direction and intended facility use goals, an exhibit conceptual plan was approved in 2016. The conceptual plan uh, for exhibits was based on a storyline detailing the agency mission and water reliability programs, defining recycled water and explaining the water treatment process, and highlighting the professionals responsible for the water production. To date, 21 interior exhibits, five interior flat screen monitors, 11 exterior tour exhibits, six exterior garden exhibits, 
three personal protective equipment pods and a new taste sampling sink station and background trust with our West Basin logo have been fabricated and installed by the October 2019 Water Education Center Grand Reopening Ceremony. Attachment A, starting on packet page 41, provides further details about these 48 completed exhibits. At the time of the grand reopening event in 2019, several exhibits were still progressing through the design and development phases with plans for their fabrication and installation anticipated after the reopening event during the 2020-21 fiscal year. These included more interactive exhibits describing the Colorado River and California aqueducts and interpretive exhibits to support the control room and water quality laboratory viewing windows. The COVID pandemic halted these planning efforts and staff is now planning to resume the completion of these exhibits. $50,000 hasn't been approved in the fiscal year 2021-22 public information and education budget to complete the water education center exhibit renovation and to upgrade some previously installed signage into more durable materials. Updating exhibit, existing exhibits by replacing installed signage with more durable materials is expected to cost $7,000. Completing on hold exhibits is expected to cost $9,000 to wrap up conceptual design plans for the aqueduct and viewing window displays, and $17,000 for the fabrication and installation of the aqueduct display. Therefore, the total budgeted exhibit expenditures to complete phase one and phase two is anticipated to be $33,000 out of the $50,000 fiscal year allocation. The remaining balance of $17,000 can then be directed to the fabrication and installation of the control room and laboratory viewing, viewing window exhibits. So the total expenditure to date is $618,540,000, well under the originally allocated $950,000 budget. Once the Water Education Center returns to full operation upon pandemic recovery, staff will evaluate the use of exhibits in tour programming and monitor visitor engagement with the educational displays to determine if more interactive exhibits should be considered as part of a potential exhibit enhancement or future phase three improvements. That completes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions or receive comments that you have. Okay, thank you, Daryl. Uh, any uh, questions from uh, board members? Sure, um, Mr. Chair, this is Director Houston. Thank you, Daryl, for the update. Um, I just want to ask, I guess more or less separately on this, it's unfortunate to hear that some of these things uh, were not ready for prime time and got installed and so on and so forth, but we're going to fix that. But that lighted aqueduct map we used to have on the back wall remember that i mean i know it was very 1980s or whatever it was still pretty cool yeah right <laughs> did, i agree yeah that yeah did we save that we did save it um and it is currently stored away okay good uh, uh, we had, we'd asked you guys to so we didn't lose it it's it's somewhere there okay that's good maybe somewhere we can you know put that back at some point i don't know <laughs> Um, just as a side note, um, the unfortunate thing about this is that display, as you said, it's very 1980, so it really doesn't blend with the rest of the contemporary exhibits we have um, integrated. And the dimensions of that that uh, display, you remember how huge it was because we had an extended ceiling up to a skyline. Now the ceilings have been dropped, so unfortunately it won't fit into the current exhibit gallery. Right, right. No, I do remember that. and. And that's the thing too, who knows, maybe, you know, if we're in a new office somewhere someday or some other thing, but at least we didn't, you know, it didn't go away forever, right? So that's a good thing. Um, and then the second thing is, so since we're talking about the plant, um, that fountain, remember the fountain that used to be out front? And we also asked you all to, to save that, hopefully. Did we save that? Yes, it is also in storage. Okay, 
that's good. Um, okay, but back to the, I mean, you know, and it was really nice when we've been in there for, you know, our, our board retreat and we've been in there, um, you know, I've, I've had just a couple of reasons to go to the plant, like when we did the video recently. Yeah, it's such a beautiful facility. So um, it will be really nice to get it reopened. And I I do understand we got these challenges. So you'll come back and let us know in more detail, uh, you know, maybe how much you've got accomplished in the sense of things that are put in place and or some things may just have to wait. It's, you know, it, it probably won't be the end of the world, obviously. Because um, what we want to do, of course, is have really nice, durable displays that are going to last. So um, with that, I just, you know, say thank you for the update. Um, and I don't know, how soon will we get another update? Is that going to be like in a couple months? I mean, it depends on when you have more to tell us. Yes, I think, you know, staff is very excited to reopen the facility. They have all staff and our guests, the general public, coming in and using the facility so we can see the crowd flow through the building, the use of interpret exhibits, the use of all our personal protective gear again, and we'll be massaging these things um, down. And then when we have our systems in place, we'll be happy to report back to the, the board how things are coming with the uh, general use of the facility up and, up and running again. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. And thank you, Mr. Chair. You bet. Any other questions? Okay, then we'll move on to the next item. Yes, President. Mm -hmm. The next item we have on our information calendar is item 6C. It's our education programs update, and this will be handled by Janelle and Kyan, uh, our public information specialist. Thank you, EJ, and good morning, Chair Williams and members of the board and committee. I will be covering agenda item 6C on our packet, covering an update of the district's free water education programs and an overview of the current education landscape. So this begins on page 49 of the agenda packet. So we'll start off with an update of the general education la landscape and the return to in-person programming. The start of the 2021 to 2022 school year proved many logistical challenges for local schools and teachers. While students were welcomed back into the classroom across all grade levels, school districts were tasked with the challenge of reopening protocols, which include daily health screenings, weekly COVID testing, shifting quarantine guidance considerations, uh, physical distancing, student face mask wearing, vaccination status, and more. So to date, the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine has the FDA's emergency use authorization for students ages 12 years old and older. As of October 7th, Pfizer has also requested emergency use authorization for its vaccines for students between five years of age and 11 years of age, with vaccines available as early as next month. Within the district service area, LAUSD and Culver City Unified have mandated vaccination for all students and staff members with similar mandates possible in smaller local school districts. On October 1, Governor Newsom mandated that all students in California receive a vaccine that has full FDA approval, not the emergency use authorization. So there are no immediate implications on this as, the on as only the Pfizer vaccine has full approval for students ages 16 years and older. While reopening safety protocols have improved since the start of the school year in August, many school districts have not yet identified protocols for in-person field trips. In addition, the Metropolitan Water District's Education Unit has stated that they will not pursue in-person education programs until all students have access to the vaccine, which is conservatively estimated at the start of the 2022 calendar year. As such, our in-person programs, such as our recycled water facility field trips, will be tentatively available starting in January 2022, and of course are de dependent on the guidance of public health officials and school district administration. Um, I'll briefly review adaptations to our in-person field trips later on in my report. Um, moving on to the next section, which will provide information on the possible creation of an independent Malibu Unified School District. So a bit of background information, in 2017, the city of Malibu submitted a petition to the LA County Office of Education to create an independent Malibu Unified School District through a separation of the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District. 
Due to ongoing negotiations between the two parties, the petition review was delayed until this year. On Saturday, September 18th of this year, the County Committee on School District Organization held the public preliminary hearing on the city's petition, and the committee voted to move forward to allow Malibu to enter the regular petition process, upon which another public hearing will be held within 60 days before voting takes place. So that'll come up in a couple months. While this petition has no negative direct impact on West Basin's education programs, we actually expect that the potential reorganization of the school districts will allow us to streamline our relationship with the Malibu area schools by allowing direct communication and minimizing program eligibility confusion with Santa Monica area schools. Are there any questions regarding the two items that I just covered, which is a return to in-person programming and the creation potential creation of a Malibu Unified School District? I don't see any. Great, so I'll move on to an update of our education program starting on page 50 of the agenda packet. So again, our water recycling facility field trips open for reservations on Monday, August 23rd, with the first session conducted on Tuesday, September 14th. We are starting the school year once again by offering virtual field trips from September through December 2021. And again, in-person field trips will be tentatively available starting in January 2022 and are dependent on the guidance of public health officials and school district administration. Once these in-person field trips begin, staff will pilot test the program with one class per field trip session rather than two classes as is traditionally conducted. This will allow for physical distancing at the facility and prevent close contact while students travel on the West Basin provided school buses. This will also allow staff adequate time for the, the disinfection of shared personal protective gear, such as hard hats, safety vests, safety glasses, and our education equipment. Our goal is to conduct at least 90 total tours for the school year. And as of today, we have served 320 students through 13 sessions and have an additional 57 sessions reserved, making a total of 70 tours. We continue to work with local schools to schedule additional tour dates in 2022. A full list of program reservations by date and school is included in the report as attachment A. So moving on to the next portion of my report, which is the Metropolitan Water District Water is Life Student Art Calendar. So again, West Basin recognized our 2021 art contest winners at our May board meeting on, the, on May 24th, 2021. An artwork of all of our 15 local student winners were submitted to MWD for consideration for their regional Water is Life Student Art Contest. Their staff has selected the following three West Basin students as regional winners and will feature their artwork in the 2022 Water is Life calendar. Uh, we have Avery Ertman, an eighth grader at Chadwick School and Alice's Art Studio in Palos Verdes Peninsula, Division I. We have Lacey Callahan, an 11th grader at Losinger High School in Lawndale, West Basin Division 5. And last but not least, we have Sierra Nimuel, also an 11th grader at Culver City High School in Division 4. An MWD hosted student recognition event is expected to take place in December 2021 with calendar distribution shortly afterwards. MWD staff is still in the process of formally announcing student recognition, so our staff will follow their direction going forward. In addition, our local Water is Life Student Art Contest is scheduled to launch in January 2022, and of course, more information will be brought back at a later time. And moving on to page 51 for an overview of our current career offerings. West Basin provides a variety of opportunities to help students explore the fulfilling and diverse careers in the water industry including career-themed water treatment facility field trips, live classroom career presentations, and a video library of pre-recorded water industry professional panel interviews. Education staff also regularly participates in campus career days and community career fairs when invited. We are also concurrently networking with local high school career technical education programs, colleges, and other potential partners to determine how West Basin can best support their needs. So moving on to our Stoller Cup program, 
which is the world's largest high school boat building and racing competition, which is offered again in partnership with, with MWD and its member agencies. Last year, West Basin supported four schools to compete in its online comp competition with Lenox Academy and Palos Verdes Peninsula High School, earning many accolades. MWD staff has not officially made any announcements regarding the 2022 Solar Cup competition, so we will return to committee at a later date when we receive more information. And moving on to our pilot program, a drop in the bucket. This pilot assembly program offered in partnership with the Wildwoods Foundation teaches students about Southern California's water sources and provides practical information about water cons conservation. This program serves third through eighth grade students and educators and shifting to virtual sessions for the 2020 to the 2021 school year. Um, for this school year, both virtual and in-person sessions will open for teacher reservations in January, 2022. Virtual sessions will be made available immediately and in-person sessions will be available from March through May, 2022. In-person sessions will take place on the school campus where up to four grade level classes will gather following safe physical distancing guidelines in an assembly format and they will play interactive games to learn more about water resources and participate in a STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics focused uh, aqueduct building active challenge moving on and that's it for the drop in the bucket program um, last but not least i'll move on to our teaching test program so west basin typically sponsors the surf rider foundation south bay chapters teaching test program where high school students volunteer to monitor water quality in the santa monica bay by collecting and processing water samples the program is on hiatus due to extended school closures during the last school year, but is ready to relaunch with a first sampling date scheduled for Sunday, October 10th, 2021. That was this past weekend. Um, so we are actually scheduled to present the Surfrider Foundation's funding request for this year's program as the next agenda item of this meeting. And again, West Basin's education staff will continue to adapt our education programs to best serve the needs of our service area students and teachers, especially in a changing education environment as we transition back to in-person programming. That concludes my report and I'm happy to take questions if there are any, thank you. Very good, thank you for that report. Um, questions? Sure, Mr. Chair. Um... Let me just go back for a second, Janelle, really quick on the solar cup competition. And I see that you mentioned that Met has not officially made any announcements regarding 2022, but maybe you said it and I missed it. Do we have any more information if there is going to happen or forthcoming or not? Um, they have informally uh, shared in our education coordinators meeting that it will be an online program but we have not yet received any information about the specific formatting, what kind of challenges it will entail and when it will begin. So again, once that information is released, we'll be happy to share it with the committee at a later date. Okay, very good. And I do know that you all have probably a roster of the handful of schools in our area that do participate or have capacity to participate. Um, and I just will remind you guys that the Wiseburn School District has a great robotics program. So please at least keep in touch with them. I also have a feeling, you know, if they're going to do something just virtual this next year, you know, there's going to be schools that, that might just say, you know what, we're not interested this year. Um, yeah. Well, yes. but I think that people might want to say, okay, we do understand, but here it just, here's the information. However, it's good to have the, the dialogue so that then when it is in real time again, you've already built up a little bit of, um, you know, some relationships, but I, schools are stretched thin. The virtual thing is really difficult as we all know. So I don't know how much participation we all gonna get, but uh, anyway, that would just be a thought. Yes, thank you. And we have been hearing, hearing anecdotally also that some teachers just aren't interested in the online format, of course. So uh, thank you for the recommendation and I will reach out to Wiseburn School District's robotics program to see if they're interested in participating. Right, right, or even if, or for the next year after, you know. Um, and then the other thing, so Surfrider, that's also 
in a holding pattern as well, right? So they have actually already begun their sampling dates. Um, they Their first sampling date was actually last Sunday, October 10th, I believe. Um, but they did also still request funding for this program. So they were able to start it early this year because they had some leftover sampling material since they closed early in 2020. Okay, good, good, good. All right, well, thank you very much for the updates. Um, and we'll continue to watch what happens. All right, thanks. Okay, any more comments, questions? Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> yes, <clears throat> President Williams, the next item that we have under our information calendar is item 6D, and this is in fact the Surfrider Foundation Teach and Test Programs Partnership. Uh, for this presentation, again, we have uh, Janelle and Kyan, our public information specialists, and I did want to point out uh, that Craig Codwallader is joining us uh, from the uh, South Bay Surfrider Foundation. Uh, he's a, a regular here at these meetings, uh, has been a longtime supporter of uh, West Basin's partnership with Surfrider. Uh, he unfortunately was not able to make public comment today, uh, but is here uh, showing support. So with that, I'll hand it over to our staff uh, for the presentation. Thank you very much. And now, good afternoon, Chair Williams and members of the board and committee. I will be covering agenda item 6D on our packet, covering the Teach and Test program in partnership with the Surfrider Foundation. This begins on page 55 of the agenda packet. The Surfrider Foundation has submitted a funding proposal to support the Teach and Test program for the 2021 to 2022 school year in the amount of $9,000. West Basin has been the program sponsor since 2006 and has provided funding to supply program equipment, supplies, and laboratory technician services. The Teach and Test program was on hiatus during last school year due to corona coronavirus related school closures but is ready to relaunch for this current school year with enhanced safety protocols with the return to in-person instruction a funding letter a funding request letter and funding spreadsheet with itemized costs is included as attachment a of this report the surfrider foundation is a nonprofit environmental organi organization dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's oceans waves and beaches through a powerful activist network their South Bay chapter, whose boundaries extend from San Pedro in the south to Bayona Creek in the north, participates in the foundation's Blue Water Task Force, a volunteer-run water testing, education, and advocacy program. The South Bay chapter's Teach and Test program, which is a part of the Blue Water Task Force, introduces high school students to water quality and supply issues and exposes them to environmental science careers. This program supports the West Basin and Surfrider Foundation mission to monitor and protect the health of the local watershed. Data from the study, which measures enterococcus bacteria concentrations in 21 different coastal locations, is made publicly available to help the community monitor the health of the Santa Monica Bay. As part of the program, students collect water samples every other Sunday from October through May. Water samples are prepared and analyzed at Dive and Surf in Redondo Beach with the oversight of an experienced laboratory technician. The first sampling date did take place on Sunday, October 10. So thank you to Craig for sharing about how uh, successful that event was. And they did have the following enhanced safety protocols, including masks required at all times, reduced number of people in the laboratory, self-attestation to vaccination status, temperature checks, and regular hand washing. The program also boasts a waste characterization study, which encourages middle school students to collect, sort, and analyze waste from storm drain outlet. The resulting data is compiled into a database for use in the organization's efforts to coordinate community solutions that reduce plastic trash on the beach and in the ocean. Volunteer program coordinators are also outreaching to underserved schools to garner interest and future participation. Again, the total requested program cost is $9,000, which has already been allocated for in the public information and education budget for this current fiscal year. I would also like to re-emphasize the benefit of this program, which again provides crucial laboratory experience and environmental career exposure for high school students. The data published from this program can help support our shared mission to monitor and protect the local watershed. 
And that concludes my report. And I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, any questions from the board? Hey, uh, Mr. Chair, it's Director Houston. No, no question. I just want to make a comment. And that is obviously, I did see that Craig, you know, I saw your comments in the chat. And I do think this is an excellent program and it's such a good way for students to get involved. And I'm glad that we've been supportive of this. And um, of course, what just, you know, what had happened at the Hyperion treatment plant and, and uh, you know, the discharge out into the bay was a huge area, area of concern for the residents along the coast. And so, I think that was even more timely and relevant than ever that um, it shows how, you know, one, we got to protect things, but two is how can we instill our young people to participate and go out and actually see it, feel it, touch it, you know, and they're testing these waters and so on. So um, I'm really, really happy this program is, is getting back on track uh, to Craig and everybody who's involved and the happy that West Basin continues to support it. And, um, you know, I don't know, the extent of our resources on these things, but I think that we should really try and push that promotion or partnership harder in the future, just to say, hey, we're doing this and we're helping these young people, um, you know, get a get a uh, foot in the door on science um, and such. So that should be something we could probably work with them a little more on, um, because there are a lot of folks who just don't even know about these programs and what's actually happening. So that's just some food for thought. Um, but again, I'm really happy that we continue to move forward with this. And thank you, Craig, and your team that uh, that really works with these students. And um, and one last thought too. I know we've we've really asked you guys to do your best to continue to diversify the pool of students who participate. So um, you don't have to respond, but I just assume that that's continuing to happen. Um, that you're doing the best you can to get students from uh, you know all areas of community around us to participate, not just the uh, the coastal areas. So um, anyway, thank you, Janelle, for that update. And thank you, Craig. OK, uh, next. Yes, President Williams, our next item under our information counter is item 6E. And that is our monthly communications update uh, for September. And for this presentation, we have Amy Rocha, our manager of communications. Thank you, EJ. Uh, good afternoon, members of the committee and board. I'm happy to give you an update on our prior month's um, activities, as well as um, looking ahead to, to what we've got in store for the remainder of the school year or calendar year and beyond. Uh, so I'll be starting um, right now where we're at. If we could jump to packet page 63, um, just showcase a little bit of our activities. Um, that you know, in the past we've really been focused on our Water Harvest Festival. I think all of our <laughs> PI team has dedicated quite a bit of time to um, putting the program together and promoting it so that we get some participation. Um, so this just showcases a press release at the end of September, uh, and then also um, the board's uh, resolution. It was a proclamation about um, staff in the in the essential role of, of water. Um, so that was another uh, announcement that we put out and is on our our website site. Um, moving forward to packet page 64, I just want to highlight a few uh, media stories. All of these stories are in attachment B that uh, starts on packet page 76, but I just want to point out a few before, before moving on. Um, so clearly we're starting to see uh, you know, coverage of the drought as it relates to our locales. Uh, you know, we've, I think heavy coverage has been at the statewide level, governor's you know, declaration level, but um, West Hollywood, Malibu have been, you know, sharing that information as well. Um, and then in addition, I just want to point out the, at the end of September on the Aqua page, there's a drought response page where all the agencies have the opportunity to showcase what they're doing. And so West Basin um, has information there, um, more of as a resource to all, all the fellow agencies um, so we can learn from each other as well. And right now I'll just move ahead to packet page 66 to talk about what's ahead of us. Um, so three main things, you know, one not surprising, we're really focused on our water use efficiency programs, our general grass replacement rebate, the um, disadvantaged communities version that we'll be rolling out um, in the coming months, as well as our rain barrel programs, um, our distribution events promotion, and as far as it, it, uh, the 
launch of that, and then our various other programs that are active. Um, again, we see this is what West Basin, what the value West Basin provides, resources to help our community save water, and we're really focusing our efforts there. Um, in addition, uh, looking at drought as a whole, um, and really kind of how are we going to move and and uh, evolve as conditions change, um, looking at um, how we're going to respond to potential declarations or mandates for reduction, um, looking at how we talk about our shift toward Colorado River water use over our dwindling state water project allocation. And I'll also talk about an, a campaign, a branding campaign in a moment. Um, up ahead. Um, but I also wanted to point out, as soon as we wrap up with water harvest, we're also going to really look at our, our anniversary of our district, um, 1947 to 2022. We're going to plan to do a year-long recognition of our district's formation, um, you know, leading up to November. And so uh, we will be providing you with more information along the way. And I think this will be um, a celebration and a recognition that will develop um, throughout the year. But I did just want to point that out ahead of time since staff will be working on that. And then if we could go to packet page 67, I just want to point out, I mean, I know Gus and Jennifer are going to give updates at the programmatic logistic level in the upcoming um, items, but I did just from a PI standpoint want to just highlight some of our goals, you know, bigger picker bigger picture objectives. Um, so, you know, with our grass replacement program, what's really driving us is the getting out all that funding, right? We have um, plentiful funding and we want to see how much, if not all of that, we can um, allocate, uh, as well as really focusing on our pilot program to serve communities at or below our median household income. So we will have um, updates on what that program name and branding or, you know, just program elements will look like in, in the coming weeks. We're hoping for a November um, launch, but again, I'll let Jennifer speak to the logistics and the development of that program. Um, and then our key tactics, you know, uh, how we're gonna, what we're gonna call the program, um, our collateral, our website content, our social media, our e-blasts, you know, how we promote it um, and earn some media coverage, what kind of um, package we offer to our retailers and partners to also amplify and share our content and then potentially um, some paid media if um, you know as, as the program rolls out. So that's for our grass replacement programs. Um, the next slide talks a little bit about our rain barrel launch. Um, so as Gus already talked about you know we have 1500 uh, yeah 1500 barrels to get uh, give away and we have you know some that are dedicated for home delivery and then the rest for pickup and so we need to communicate those nuances. Um, we're really looking to have a really finite time period for this. So November launch with the February conclusion, you know, in the peak rainy season. Uh, we are in full on planning mode from the PI uh, side of things with, with the development underway for our collateral and flyers and promotion. And uh, that last bullet just highlights similar tactics that we'll be pursuing. And then finally, the drought. Um, so this is more of a general, you know, how we're talking about drought in the communities. Um, you know, we want to encourage water savings, obviously. Um, general drought awareness and the various conditions that are um, happening. And then really highlighting our available district solutions that provide real water and cost savings. Um, right now, of these tactics, we're really looking at the branding side of things. We want to create something creative, something eye-catching, and um, and I'll get to that in the next slide, but um, I also want to let you know, too, as far as some of these um, tactics, we have been meeting and just really engaging with our communities. So um, in September, uh, we had a drought communicators workshop. So our PIOs, our uh, retailer, corporate communications, and just trying to get on the same page about, okay, what, you know, what are the triggers? What are we, what do we need to be aligned with? How can we help each other? And so it was kind of nice, almost like a joint information, you know, type of group ahead of this drought emergency. Um, and then we will stay in touch kind of as triggers such as you know a governor's mandate or any any major um, next step um, we'll, we'll keep in touch and then similarly the water resiliency work group meeting that Gus organizes um, that was with the kind of the water conservation of uh, side of the house and that was held at the end of September and so all of these provide great 
chances to hear what people are doing, what their concerns are, where we can collaborate, how we keep our messaging in coordination. And then of course, just side conversations as well with um, you know different colleagues uh, in communications about what they're doing with the drought, um, reached out to WRD uh, and some other fellow agencies just to uh, keep in touch. So with that, I'll pause before we go to, um, to slide 70. I'm kind of excited to share just something fun and different, um, you know, in terms of creative uh, input and, and branding. Um, so as the drought takes its course, and uh, if we could go ahead to the next um, slide, um, we're, we're working on a, a more general drought campaign. Um, we have some preliminary creative concepts we want to share today with the committee and our aim is to really just create something just eye-catching and a little bit creative and we want people to learn about our drought conditions you know encourage others to learn um, generate this sense of community both at our service area level and and for all Californians, as you can see in this image, drought is impacting everybody and we're all interrelated. Um, so this campaign is meant to really kind of localize what it means to our individual service area cities while at the same time tying to the statewide conditions. Um, I'll show you a couple of images in a moment, but I just want to let you know we got some preliminary internal feedback and as again, some input from, from our colleagues in the industry. And I want to, um, just I leave it at that. I think we got some positive input, um, but I won't say too much more because I kind of want to get your reactions right now. What I show what I show you is all we have at the moment. It's in the very preliminary stages, um, but I just want to make sure we're all on the same page um, before we go further. So with that, I'll, if we could go to the next slide. This was a phrase um, that is meant to have this. Um, overarching concept of California as a whole um, and, and staying, being prudent with our water uh, use and, and really um, thought it was a fun, family-friendly uh, approach that again offers the California big picture as well as local efforts. Um, and so with the next slide, this is just a sampling of what um, this could look like. Uh, we have several comments already to just you know develop further but just to give you a sense of things um, i really want to highlight in the bottom left corner there this opportunity to localize our efforts to call out our cities um, to uh, tailor those messages along with it whether it's a congratulatory really keep it up the good work for those who are our low water users and maybe a more encouraging message for those who are our higher water users so it provides a flexibility um, so with that, I'm going to pause and just get initial gut reactions, comments, anything you want to share, um, because staff would like to move forward with developing this um, because conditions are changing quickly. If you don't mind, I, I'd just like to add, you know, this uh, presentation and getting your, your uh, initial thoughts would be extremely helpful to West Basin staff. You know, if you look at the statewide uh, discussion related to the drought, and actually for the past several years, as they've uh, constantly hit us with the make conservation a California way of life, I think that resonates with us in the industry because it it tells us that these are the uh, the the current conditions that we're in are something that we're going to have to play with uh, for for a long time into the future. And that's what water planners are doing as far as water use efficiency and uh, local supply development. In the case of this uh, and, and this tagline, it really allows us to hit kind of s several different aspects of it. And you can see it at the very bottom, although it's it's uh, slightly uh, small lettering, but it's save water, save California. But it also allows us to wrap in the message of uh, save money. And I think that that really hits our residents, our constituents, and our businesses. It resonates with them that that they're doing the right thing and actually benefiting themselves. So uh, that, there is that that benefit of being able to wrap almost everything that we do with, within West Basin uh, to this catchphrase. Uh, but with that, I would uh, love to hear uh, the thoughts and uh, uh, comments from the committee as well as the board. Okay, I see Director Houston looks like he's chomping at the bit. You can tell I'm chomping at the bit under my mask. <laughs> Just that. Um, no, really quick. Uh, no, I think it's great. I, I love it. I think it's 
you guys also sent this slide, I think, right before uh, this morning, and I barely had to look at any of it before I was leaving my house, but um, it's a nice surprise. I think this is excellent because um, it's got a great, you know, verbiage and tagline, and, you know, people can kind of you know, get into it, if you will. It really appeals to different age categories, but I love the localization, um, and as you guys know, we have every city we serve has got iconic locations and pictures you could utilize. So it's nice, you could really tailor this um, fairly easily across our cities. Um, so I think this is excellent. And um, and I guess on that really quick, Amy, I'll, I'll kind of tag back to what you had mentioned earlier the, in that, in the other, don't, don't change the slide, but when you talked about the drought, uh, re meeting with the other communicators and PIOs, et cetera, et cetera, um, was that meeting with folks from some of the cities that actually do have PIO staff was is that what you're talking about as well as water districts uh, it was it was our retailers right so just you know uh, we invited um, Lumida um, Manhattan Beach I think Manhattan Beach was the only city uh, I know they're having some change of PIO with El Segundo but we did extend those invitations uh, and same with Inglewood um, so I think we hit we captured Inglewood on the water use efficiency work group, but not the communicators. So again, it's like this nice, like what, who's changed? What let's, let's get ourselves organized before things really progress. Um, so again, yeah. retailers. Good. Yeah. Because I think that's really, it is really important um, because as you know, there are a few cities that are really on it. They're organized. They've got staff, um, you know, and I also see that they, they participate with this. So Hermosa Beach is really good. Obviously, Culver City, West Hollywood, Malibu. So you've got a few that are just pretty, pretty automatic. Um, and so I know that I think that that's this is perfect to work with them and, and kind of have that um, that joint effort to get the word out uh, so they can help push it. We can push it. But then they have this branding that will really uh, resonate well with them and their residents. So, um, and one last thing too, is I mean, you mentioned WRD and I've noticed WRD has been stepping it up because um, I see it in my Facebook feed or in, you know, whatever they're, you know, they're, they're saying the things that uh, obviously we would be normally saying about changing your shower head and other things. I've seen some of their, their advertising and videos. So I think we are very timely to um, do our part anyway, but I, I really like this. Um, and I think it would play very well in your presentations when you talk to talk to community groups, et cetera. The super frugalistic that works really nice. So um, I like it. Thank you. Okay, I just like to ditto what uh, uh, Director Houston said. I, I like it too. And um, the Save Water, Save California is uh, something that. Uh, uh, I've been hitting on, on ever since I get on the, got on the board, and uh, it just it sounds good. And to have it where uh, these other uh, we have like uh, let's make uh, El Segundo super. What is it? Cali uh, frugalistic. <laughs> that tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that that's great. So. Um, yeah, I, I think we need to do that. And uh, like I said, you know, we need to step up what we're doing and, and do it quicker because we're all, all we have all these different water agencies. Like we have um, uh, WRD and we have our uh, retailers who are, um, you know, um, saying the same thing. And so we need to, we need to be, who, who's gonna be first? So who needs to be out there uh, leading the charge? And uh, I think that it needs to be uh, West Basin. So um, we got to do it quicker and faster. If you know what I mean? Okay. So yeah, I, I'm all for it. And Director Deer. Yes. Yes. Wait, wait, you have comments? No other comments. I'm fine. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, one one more thing, Mr. Chair. Sure. Sure. I almost I did forget this, Amy, but it, it's funny because before you even got to this part, I was 
writing some notes, I was going to mention, and this is perfect timing, um, I believe the conversation came up recently at the city of West Hollywood during the council meeting. They were they were talking about a number of issues, and one of them they the council members called out was drought and what's going on. And I think they were talking about how to start messaging to the residents. And you remember back when the last big drought, they were very creative. They had a wonderful campaign. So this may also be very perfect timing to reach out to the city of West Hollywood um, public relations folks and say, what are you guys looking at? What did the council recently talk about? And by the way, we're looking at doing some stuff because I was, I was already going to suggest if we could try and just touch base with them and partner up on whatever they might be doing because, um, you know, they really put resources into things when they get behind it. So it's perfect timing, Amy. Great. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, that is part of kind of the rollout uh, in terms of providing resources, con keeping to connect. We started with the retailers since, you know, they have coverage for everyone. But, you know, that that's one thing that became very apparent during conversations with the um, utilities versus the cities. You know, they the Cal waters of, of, the, of the world are dedicated to talking about water, whereas the city of Manhattan Beach has so many other issues to discuss and priorities. And, you know, how do we make it easier for them to talk about water? Water. So uh, most definitely we're going to be expanding into to the cities that are not necessarily retailers. Um, so great. We are going to refine. I know we have various comments on our pie end in terms of what we want to see this evolve and, and make it um, you know, highly water relevant. So we were going to move forward with that. We'll keep everyone posted in terms of what resources available, how, the, how things are progressing. Um, so I'll finish up my presentation um, with some social media highlights. Um, Again, we have a new staff member starting on Monday. Um, we will be bringing on a specialist who will be able to focus more um, of her time on social media, as well as our website enhancements. I think it's really critical at this time, the resources we have available on our web, you know, to talk about drought and to talk about water conservation programs. So I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, just examining this kind of at a end of year, mid fiscal year point to kind of take a look at how we're going to progress our social media. So this is just a snapshot of our highlights. You can see how, you know, firescaping workshop partnering with, um, you know, our, the county and Malibu to, to get that um, promoted, got some play. Same with Lomita um, promoting kind of our, our rebates and, and just um, what we can do to help people be water wise and then metropolitan sharing our water harvest online event so we always appreciate that um, engagement with our with our partners and then uh, moving on to the next slide packet page 72 just twitter highlights this was our contract cities um, presence and participation uh, director houston was representing the district and uh, we had some staff in attendance um, but just that's you know i think twitter is a perfect type of medium for that because it's a lot of you know as it happens type of posts um, you can see on the next slide, packet page 73 on Facebook, a little bit more uh, us winding down on our summer time now that summer's over, but um, this was in August, um, just drought again, driving to our grass replacement resources. And then uh, you could kind of see how things vary uh, for Instagram uh, on, on the next slide. You know, this was more about the, the speaking opportunity where um, Director Houston, along with Met GM um, Adele Haja Khalil, had presented at the Contract Cities. So um, just some, some uh, you know, Instagram post highlights there. And then finally, LinkedIn, you know, is a little bit different, uh, appreciating the labor, the, the employees um, and, and the hardworking staff that, uh, you know, support the water industry and, and uh, hardworking people everywhere. So that is it. That concludes my report. Please let me know if you have any uh, additional questions or comments on anything covered today or um, something for future consideration. But thank you for your time. Well, thank you for the report, um, Mr. Uh, your manager. I have one thing, Mr. Chair, really fast. Go ahead. Uh, oh, thank you, Amy. I wanted you already touched on it. I'm really glad you guys are ahead of this. So yes, next year is our 75th anniversary, and so um, I'm I'm glad you all are preparing ahead. And it sounds like you're going to make the whole course of the year over it, basically. Um, but I suppose for planning, when will you be coming back to give us a little more just the pre-information or start that that dialogue with the board? Is that in the next 
what, one, two, three months? When? Uh, yeah, it would need to be sooner, really. I think we've we've had this, you know, on our radar, and I think just with the water harvest, it's new platform every year. <laughs> Poor Melissa. Um, but um, yeah, so I think I think as soon as this month rolls out, I think in November we'll have a firmer sense of where we want to go. We've already had some initial conversations tapping some other agencies in terms of what you know they, they've been doing and getting ideas. So I think we'll have something more formed because, I mean, ideally we would have something in place a little bit sooner. But again, we're, we're doing the best we can <laughs> with our resources. And I think in the next month or so, we should have um, some more information for the board. Good, good. Okay, I'm really excited about that. So, um, and also remember that, uh, was it Dave, I think, had pulled up a lot of historical, you know, uh, archival things here at the, uh, at the office. And so hopefully we can utilize some of that in our, in our, work next year. Definitely. And actually taking Dave's hat as he you know, moved on, he wanted to make sure somebody on staff kind of had the scoop on where things were. Um, Janelle Ankayan actually has stepped up to kind of play that role and keeping tabs on things. So we're glad to have her on our team. And this obviously will become very relevant. Great. Great. All right. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Uh... Uh, Mr. General Manager, we have a special board meeting that starts at 12 o'clock. Is that correct? Uh, <clears throat> President Williams, that, that special board meeting begins at 1 p.m. I'm sorry, 1 p.m. So that's not too far off. That's what I'm really getting at. So we need to uh, move along a little bit here because uh, I don't have to drive in. I'm not in the office. We do have two additional items. Both of them are our are, are monthly regular updates uh, at the direction of the committee. We're happy to run through those as quickly as possible, or if you want, we could defer those to the full board. The, uh, the packets contain all of the relevant information. So uh, in, in reviewing that, you, you'd get a good feel for where we are. Uh, but if the directors have any questions, we, we could run through those items fairly quickly. And what's your pleasure, uh, Director Houston? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm happy if you just want to suspend those today. We don't have to go through them, then we can read our packets. I, I forgot that you're going to have to drive over. So, um, you know, if you want to move things along and, and move past those, I'm okay with that. Okay, very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, with that, we will move those on to the uh, board. Okay, Mr. Manager. And then President Williams, uh, the next item on the agenda is item number seven, which is closed session. We do not have any closed session items today for, for this committee. Uh, and then of course, item eight is director's comments and future agenda items. Do we have any directors? I'll just make a brief comment. I just want to say this is, I, I see, look, at the end of the day, our staff, you guys have got a lot on your plate and we're now we're cramming up against the end of the year, but that's when it gets busy because of the rain barrels and the winter season and the droughts going on. So I know that you, uh, you've got a lot going on. I just want to say, I do appreciate it. I think you're coming up with some really excellent and creative ideas. I love it. And, um, you know, again, we're just being innovative here at the district. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, yes, the one last thing. I was at the uh, the El Segundo, um, there's been a couple events there, but uh, this past weekend, it was over at the, um, the fair on Richmond, is what they called it, even though they held it on Main Street. But anyway, the fair on Richmond, and I stopped by, and we have a wonderful booth. So just so our board members know, the staff has these excellent booths. They, they brought, really got it down now. But uh, there was a resident and she, of course, had said, hey, you know what, I, I signed up for the uh, Water Harvest Festival and she was, she was a local um, and she was all excited to get her kit. Um, but for what it's worth, people are seeing, people are paying attention and they, you know, if you see them in person, they actually do come up and, and mention it. So uh, I thought that was really great. Uh, so it's working, the advertising is working. So with that, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased with today's uh, agenda and want to say thank you to everyone and thank you Mr. Chair. Okay, very good. Thank you Director uh, Deer. Do I... I, I just want to, re I was going to mention yesterday but we didn't get to have time. Uh, Jerry Gladback who's the chairman of LAFCO 
a water board director from the Castaic area, uh, was honored by the California State Lapco Organization with a Lifetime Achievement Award, one of 12 given out in the last 60 years. So that's quite an honor for him. That is he's attended our board meetings also, by the way, because he was involved with the, uh, what is it, the financing, uh, the, the health, whatever the thing is, with the state of uh, 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 Aqua. So he's attended our, our, our board meetings too. It's quite an honor for him. That's all I have. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I guess I have nothing more. So then, um, director, any other director online? No. So then, uh, that takes us to uh, item number nine. Adjournment. We are now adjourned. Thank you.